Um, Nelson Construction here in Mr. Baird. Yes, sir. The council. Uh, Brad Baird, Deputy, uh, Deputy Administrator of Infrastructure. Um, we're here to talk about uh, Southeast Seminole Heights stormwater improvements. And uh, I have with me uh, Will Stock, who is a project manager for Nelson Construction. He will provide uh, an update on the project as well as go through the issues that have come through Chairman Maniscalco's office and Councilwoman Hertak's office. So with that, I'll turn it over to Will. Is that on there correctly? Okay. Okay, I got you now. Okay, I'll make adjustments as needed there. Good morning, all. Um, Good morning. Start with uh, the river and we'll work our way out north and then east. So starting at River Boulevard, right here, um, at the cul-de-sac, the sidewalk and curb are complete and the cul-de-sac has been paved. Uh, we still have to regrade between the sidewalk and the curb and place the sod. And at the same time, we'll be placing the sod just on the south side of the outfall where it's, uh, where it's been rutted out from, from car traffic. On Crest, uh, right here in the middle at the Highland intersection, that's been paved in its final configuration. And that will be striped uh, once the asphalt has had time to cure. So we're looking at mid to late August on that. On Florida, Florida Avenue, between Crest and Frierson. Uh, we've had some more back and forth with FDOT. They've added another inlet for us to re-pour uh, that was not previously in our scope. And we're currently waiting on rebar fabrication uh, from, the, from the fabrication shop uh, to be delivered um, so that we can finish that work. We've been waiting about a month on the rebar. We're hoping to get the rebar by next week so that we can get that, uh, get that storm, storm work wrapped up and get, the, uh, get that section of road, that 200 feet of road repaved. On Frierson, between Florida and Central, the curb and the first lift of asphalt have been installed, and we're cu currently pouring the driveway aprons and grading uh, behind the curb for sod. Uh, the final lift of asphalt should be installed in a few weeks after all the sod has been put in place. Sir, can um, I stop you for just a moment since you're on Friar? You're talking about Frierson and Central right now, correct? Yes, sir. Um, I was asked by a constituent, it says uh, proposed improvements to Central Avenue were going to be decorative brick crosswalks with new stop bars at each east-west street in the corridor to connect sidewalks and call attention to the stopping point on these streets. Uh, the constituent that contacted us uh, said that that was changed from the original design. Do you know anything about that? or is it Because it should be staying the same from my understanding. Correct. Uh, the original, what was originally proposed was uh, decorative brick crosswalks uh, with new stop bars on each east and west end. So we're still doing that. Uh, the plan has always been to put that on top of the fresh asphalt as a thermoplastic product. Okay. So it'll be it'll be raised and it'll have a roughened surface. Okay. Um, similar to what's been put down in other parts of the city as well. For, okay. Very for good. Crosswalks. So it's still in the plan and it hasn't been changed. Correct. We've got to wait until 30 days after the asphalt has been placed. So okay. right now we've got that scheduled to begin the night of August 14th. All right. I'll let the individual know. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. All right. On, uh, on central south of Hillsboro, so from Hillsboro to uh, just south of Osborne, uh, the final lift of asphalt has been installed and the road has been striped with temporary paint. Uh, the only exception is the Osborne intersection itself. Uh, where we'll have to come back uh, likely under a nighttime scenario uh, and mill and resurface the intersection. Uh, again, the asphalt needs 30 days to cure uh, before we're able to put the striping down in its permanent configuration, which will include the brick crosswalk starting on August 14th. Um, the other thing we're looking at doing is opening this entire section of uh, Central to two-way traffic before school starts back on August 10th. So I know we've gotten uh, a lot of concerns raised uh, both us as the contractor and the city with, uh, with two-way traffic on a one-way street, people going the wrong direction. So that'll be uh, alleviated here in the next week or so. Let's see. Uh, we're gonna, gonna jump up here now to, uh, to Hannah. It, pull, it, pull it down, we can't oh, see thank it. You. <laughs> so this is Hannah and Central Avenue, okay. Correct, the <laughs> Hannah Central Avenue intersection uh, going down to Nebraska. Uh, we've encountered uh, multiple unforeseen conditions in the intersection and along the roadway itself that have created multiple setbacks for us. Um, we've also worked with the city on adding additional scope to the intersection and along Hanna. 
Uh, despite these setbacks and additions, uh, we are still on schedule to open the Hanna Central intersection and Hanna itself between, uh, between the intersection and the I-275 overpass. So that's essentially from the intersection to the far east school entrance. That will allow cars uh, to make the traffic loop coming in through that intersection, coming in off of, off of, uh, off of Sly or off of Florida Avenue, uh, be able to make the, the car loop to do drop off and pick up and go back out. And when do you expect that to be done? Uh, we're paving that next Tuesday, and that will be open before, uh, before open house on August 8th. And that will allow access, normal access, to the businesses right there on Central and Hannah, correct? No, sir. What we're doing right now is uh, we're going to have the intersection open uh, east, west, and north. It'll stay closed to the south for likely another four to six weeks while we continue to work through some of the issues we've got there. Okay, and Paris Street is how far <coughs> south from Hannah? Is it two blocks, or is it the next block over from where? From uh, Paris is the next block to the south. It's about uh, 400 feet south of Hannah. So if someone wanted to go to one of the businesses there in that, in that area in front of the church, they can just take, I don't know, Comanche, Henry, whatever, to Central, and they could access it more easily than they can now, correct or no? Correct, yes. Uh, the, the Paris intersection is open, and uh, we will not close the Paris intersection until we have access restored uh, coming off of Hannah intersection. Okay, very good. Um, working, working from uh, I-275 over to Nebraska, um, we're still installing sanitary uh, sewer there and extending the storm drain system to the Nebraska intersection. Uh, that work will probably continue uh, we're looking to have the rest of Hannah open by early October, allowing, allowing the school um, to go back to its normal traffic loop, which will be coming in off of Nebraska. Um, like I said, we're looking at paving uh, the first 600 feet of Hannah in the intersection next uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And when we do so, we will also be uh, paving the intersection of Idlewild, which is right there on the map, the Cherokee Idlewild intersection. Um, central north of Hillsboro, so that's this portion from Starbucks going up uh, to Paris Street. Uh, the box culvert work is complete uh, from, Com from uh, Comanche to Henry. So from Comanche to Henry, we've got that storm work complete, and we're currently working on tying the storm system together in the Henry intersection. Um, we'll be setting the final baffle box for the project, uh, one of the project's green, uh, green infrastructure initiatives. And that will be taking place on the north side of the intersection next week, on the north side of the Henry intersection. Um, this will allow us to continue installing storm drain and uh, water main pipe uh, to the north, to Paris. Uh, and we've already run those utilities from, from Hannah down to Paris. Uh, so it's really just about finishing the surface improvements there between, uh, between Paris and Hannah on the north end. Um, as I stated before, we had uh, quite a few setbacks, um, ran into a lot of unknowns in the Hand intersection, and so to, in order to stay on schedule, we shut down our work in the southeast Seminole Heights neighborhood uh, for somewhere between four and six weeks so we can focus on getting the work done in front of the elementary school. Um, work has started back there now. On 12th Street... Oops. Oh, sorry, yes. Let's see. Okay. So on 12th Street, the 24-inch water main has been installed from Caracas down to the Osborne intersection. We'll be jumping over the Osborne intersection uh, before the end of this week, hopefully, and continuing with water main, continuing with water main installation uh, south to Curtis. Um, we'll then be going back and connecting the dots in the middle of the Osborne intersection um, at a later date. Um, we're also looking at going ahead and uh, tying in water main between uh, Caracas and New Orleans and then working our way south to Osborne so that we can start bringing the new system online and taking the old system offline. That will allow us to continue with uh, storm drain installation taking place on Caracas now and then once they finish at Caracas on 11th, jumping straight up there on, on 12th at Caracas and continuing south for a fluid operation. Um, like I said, uh, stormwater work is taking place on Caracas right now with a uh, 16-inch storm insulation, and we do have uh, vibration monitoring taking place 
um, on that storm pipe run, the, the largest storm pipe we have being installed on the project right now. Uh, water main will also be uh, starting back in the next couple of weeks at Nebraska, and it'll be uh, following the storm work into the neighborhood uh, so we can start building road behind ourselves here in the very near future. Um, there were a few questions uh, brought up to us. I wanted to run through those real quick as well. Um, we, had, uh, we had concerns with some of the granite curb installation that's taken place on, uh, that's taken place on Central. Um, the granite curb that we're resetting there is 80 to 100 years old. Um, and none of that curb at this point is flat, flush, or square. Uh, so it's, it's almost impossible to get that curb to fit back together perfectly the same way that it comes out of the ground. So um, every piece of curb uh, that we're touching or every piece of curb that's set back is touching another piece of curb, even if it's underground and unseen. And uh, where the granite curb is radius pieces, meaning curved piece of actual stone, um, those pieces are almost impossible to get to fit back together correctly. Um, if there's any change to the radius at all, um, the, the granite curb won't fit back together at all. Uh, we've talked about that before, like on the southeast corner of um, of Giddens and Central. That's why we had to pour back about 24 feet of concrete curb where there was granite curb before on that section. There was no way to make the, the pieces of, of curb granite curb fit there. Um, uh, there was a question about uh, advance notice of road closures. Um, I don't believe we've had any road closures since we last came before City Council, um, but the city has uh, protocols on advance notification, uh, variable message boards that have to be put in place. Uh, we provide uh, notification as well through the website uh, that for, for areas where we're shutting down and we've adhered and followed all those specifications. Um, I know there was concern um, raised when we were repaving the Highland Crest intersection. Um, we never actually shut down Highland during that operation. It was about a two hour operation. Um, we did that under a flagging operation. And because of the short short duration, we didn't believe that that warranted any advance notification aside from that. The city was aware, city staff, city inspection was aware, uh, mobility department was aware, and we felt that went off uh, very well. Um, we've mentioned vibration monitoring. That's, being, that's taking place in the Southeast Seminole Heights neighborhood right now on the 60-inch storm. Um, <coughs> comments on, uh, on communication and litter, um, that's going to be an ongoing, uh, an ongoing struggle for us as it is on all construction projects. Uh, we continue to get complaints about litter in areas that, where we haven't worked in weeks, but because it's part of an action construction, active construction zone, uh, we, get, we, get, uh, we get blamed for that as well. Not to, mean, not to say we don't have room for improvement, we do have room for improvement there as well, but um, I think I've said enough on that. Uh, looking at, uh, at delays in schedule, um, new timeline projection for paving Florida Avenue. Like I said, right now we're waiting on rebar from the fabrication shop. Um, we've, we've asked for an update on that. We haven't been able to get an update on the, on the, on the status of the rebar from the fabrication shop. We're hoping to get it next week. Uh, if that takes place, it should only be about two to three weeks to install the six inlet tops. Um, and then after that, we'll be scheduling the paving. Uh, to get the paving done and done right, that'll have to take place under a nighttime, uh, under a full nighttime closure. Uh, and I believe DOT requires a two week notice on that for a full shutdown. So that will obviously be coming a couple weeks after we finish with all the stormwater work. All that'll have to be inspected and make sure that's approved before we go through and put the final lift of asphalt down. Um, we, talked earlier about the decorative brick, brick crosswalks. Um, we also talked about drivers going the wrong direction on Central, on Central Avenue. That'll be alleviated when we, uh, when we open that to two-way traffic here in the next week or so before August 10th. And uh, there was also questions about some of the uh, damaged uh, stop sign and street name signs. Uh, some of those signs had to come down during construction to facilitate construction and uh, they were put back up temporarily while the new ones are being ordered. So all new signage has been ordered for Central Avenue. Um, some of the signs do, do stay in place, but uh, 
the signs that are that are that have been discussed that are of concern those have already been ordered by our subcontractor all right thank you very much great presentation um, I've asked my questions and I've done several ride-alongs I did one with you Monday or Tuesday morning uh, and again you took me through the whole neighborhood <coughs> And uh, we're very good, very specific, and you reiterated a lot of the stuff today. So I, I appreciate you being here. So, Councilwoman Hertek. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, I think the road closure was an issue with Paris that was for a few hours that, you know, again, we're struggling with the businesses that are being affected by the closure at Hannah and Central. Um, when looking at the communication and litter complaints, I think that's why these, these uh, one of the reasons we're, we're having you come back is that so it's a good time to touch on that and just kind of remember and be reminded and make sure that, you know, this is a, six weeks is a great time to, to remind your crew. Um, sometimes you have some new uh, subcontractors and just, it's a good time to reiter reiterate that. Um, and as far as communication, like I said, uh, you know, I get the updates and, and they're frequent, um, but making sure that you continue to leave door hangers where it's appropriate, knock on doors when possible. Um, it seems like an hour of door knocking saves 10 hours on the back end mm -hmm. of questions and problems. So uh, again, appreciate all, of, all that you were able to answer all of the questions that, uh, that we had gotten from <laughs> constituents. Um, so thank you for that. And the curb situation is, that's hard because um, the granite curbs are just beautiful and, and that neighborhood in particular really loves their curbs. Um, so the issue of how um, we can get those in and settled, uh, I know is important to so many people. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll continue to do what we can there. But again, I appreciate your coming and, uh, and, and you know, filling us in. Thank you. Council Member Clendenin. So those granite curbs, the ones that you're not able to reinstall, are we, are we keeping those and, and getting them to the city so that we can repurpose them if we, need, if we can somewhere else? Absolutely. We've okay. still got a good amount of granite curb uh, going in in different parts of the project, so we've got those stockpiled in different storage yards on site, palletized right now. Um, anything left over at the end of the project will be turned over to the city's yard. Thank, Thank you. you. And so all that has been saved. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir. I just again wanted to salute uh, Councilwoman uh, Hertak and Councilwoman Maniscalco just for, you know, continuing to stay up on this. I know this has been, um, you know, it's obviously a needed project, but, you know, sometimes needed projects have incidental effects, and we appreciate your being out here. Just wanted to salute both of you all for this. Uh, my, uh, like I've communicated before, my wife loves Valhalla, so, so we know all about it, so, uh, so thank you. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, again, projects have incidental effects, and it's good to have Council uh, on that. So thank you for your time. Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Chairman. I, again, like it was echoed by Councilmember Vieira, it's very difficult at times when you're used to going down the street and you just do what you like to do. You're simple. There was no roadblock. There was nothing. And all of a sudden, boom, we have all this construction that's helping for the years to come, many years to come. I, I can only say that I compare it to what's happening in West Tampa. I remember going by one of the West Tampa sandwich shop and I, I found a very interesting thing. Some of the people that were eating breakfast and lunch we're outside watching how they did the pushing of the inside pipe inside of the other. And when I got there a couple of weeks later, they were appalled that these things happen and how it happens. So it's interesting, it's educational, and it benefits society. And uh, hopefully we get it done, and like always, in a proper manner, and we go forward with uh, much more progress. Thank you very much for doing what you're doing, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. We'll be, in, we'll be in touch. Thank you, sir. Anything else, Mr.